Well, we got to do Musk, man. And Musk is a funny one to talk about on this show because obviously he, I have nothing but disdain for him and no doubt about it, it is personal. It became personal for me really, uh, well, certainly when he came to Austin, but I had already sort of not been a fan of him before that. Um, when he sort of uh, lied and was maligning these heroic divers who were helping those children in Southeast Asia who were stuck in a cave um, because they didn't want to use his like made up, you know, submarine. Um, you know, I just sort of showed to me that not only is this a person that I just like personally don't like, this person I don't want to be in control of a lot of our resources, especially if those resources are sort of supposedly being put toward, I don't know, the future um, and how we're going to sort of live on this planet. Uh, he's somebody who certainly worries me um, for that. I mean, just look at that that submarine episode. The guy implied uh, a rescue diver was a pedophile uh, yeah. because he didn't want to use his submarine and like that he just did that to millions of people and then when there i'm pretty sure there was a defamation lawsuit uh mm -hmm. elon's like yeah, i was just joking that's tweets like what kind of like think about that level that's like that's like psychopathy to me that's like i don't care if I, we don't need to look for a gene in the brain for someone that behavior mm -hmm. is sociopathic that's a pa that's pathologically um anti-social behavior and like to the fact of like just not caring just to not care about that and to, obviously like you'd have all sorts of his little freaks looking into the guy's shit. Like I, I, really despicable. I mean, and obviously the mass um, uh, exploitation of, uh, and uh, uh, harassment of or abuse of workers is, is probably a bigger thing, but yeah, I agree. That was like, what do you do? This guy is, it's got screws. Mm -hmm. Oh no, he certainly does. And um, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get this uh, to work on our computer. Um, so I can share these articles because the point is though, is like, this guy certainly has a screw loose. This guy has like a celebrity, right? As somebody who like people are interested in is a very annoying person. Um, but the reason we wanted to do a kind of longer segment on him today is despite the fact that like, yeah, you know, we're, we're frustrated with him as like a character. This guy has ridiculous amounts of power and say, um, in our society and, I, I really wanted to, I might just have to, um, to, uh, just read these, uh, titles out because I'm not able to share my screen. Um, but we want to talk about, uh, a few different stories. I think really highlight some of the fundamental problems with this guy, Musk. Um, and let's start from the small and get to the big. Um, the first one is this story that I think a lot of people didn't, um, catch, uh, this that was came out earlier this week uh, was that the federal government is investigating Tesla over claims related to solar panel fire risks. And this is coming from the Austin American statesman. Federal regulators have opened an investigation into Tesla after a former employee alleged the company failed to notify the public and shareholders about potential fire risks related to solar panels. Reuters news service first reported Monday that the U S securities and exchange commission was investigating the Austin based automaker Tesla did not respond to Reuters questions, according to the news service. Um, Stephen Hankies, a former Tesla employee who worked as a solar field quality manager, filed the complaint in 2019. Uh, Hankis um, was fired in 2020 and sued Tesla, alleging he was dismissed for retaliation. Um, and essentially what he found, this guy was a quality control engineer, um, and he found out that Tesla did not alert its shareholders or the people who it had been installing these solar panels on their properties and their homes, um, that these solar panels were actually quite prone um, to flare-ups and, um, and, and to fires. Um, that basically Tesla had information that these things were, were dangerous, that they were having serious malfunctions, and they hid that information from their shareholders and their customers. Um, and this is a classic story. This is another point about uh, Musk that we're going to get into throughout this, um, is that despite all this stuff that people like to say, oh my God, well, he's doing his things his own way. He's doing things differently. You know, before I was doing journalism, I used to work at a organization that sort of fought for corporate whistleblowers to come forward and to talk about things that their companies were doing that were putting the 
the public at risk. This is the most classic shit mm-hmm. that major corporations do. Somebody comes forward with serious concerns about the safety of the public and the customers and the shareholders, right? We might not, you know, cry too much about them, but it still is worthwhile and important. Um, you know, it's, it's serious information that, you know, that, that should be made public and addressed. Um, but instead, time and time again, major corporations, um, they isolate and humiliate and then terminate uh, whistleblowers. And this is another example of it. Um, and in this case, you know, the stakes are quite high um, to imagine putting something on your home that could, you know, potentially catch on fire. Um, you know, in the good, it's good that the federal government is investigating uh, this, uh, you know, this yes. thing, but this is not an isolated incident because this goes throughout all of Musk's companies and endeavors. There's this kind of typical pattern of, you know, one, exploiting people, bad work safety standards and things like that. Um, but also when there is a problem, lie, deceive, and, uh, um, you know, try try to uh, you know to, to run interference. I mean, it's it's really incredibly nasty stuff. Yeah, this from a guy who, um, I mean, just look at the I think the way he lies about. I mean, I'd call it lies or over promises about mm-hmm. the um, miracles of his uh, uh, self driving technology that keep keep uh, it was supposed to be here by now, and this is a guy who just who will just lie about that. Of course, he's going to lie about. That. You know, or, or 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 conceal as much as any fucking boss in this country would. And we're going to get mainly to talk about Tesla, the car company. Um, but I wanted to note too because um, we're, we're going to play a video in a second about some of the statements that he's made about you know what the federal government should and should not be doing. Um, but I, I wanted to uh, you know to highlight that throughout um, Musk's kind of career, he is somebody who overpromises and under delivers um, and basically tries to, I don't know, run interference and, and smoke shows um, to sort of hide what's actually going on. This is another thing that leaked over the break. Um, Right here, Elon Musk says Raptor engine production is a disaster that puts SpaceX at risk of bankruptcy. This is why you shouldn't uh, reading the verge so they're being cute um, with their titles. But on Black Friday, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk sent an anxious email to his company's employees, urging them to work over the weekend on SpaceX's Raptor engine line and describing the production situation as a crisis. In the email, a copy of which was obtained by the verge, Musk argued that the company faces a genuine risk of bankruptcy if production doesn't increase to support a high flight rate of the company's new Starship rocket next year. The Raptors, the Raptor SpaceX's massive methane, methane engine um, that will be used to propel the company's next generation launch system called Starship. SpaceX plans to use Starship to take people to deep space. And in April, NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract to develop Starship as a lunar lander to transport astronauts to the moon's surface as early as 2025. And the the point here is that you know this is another example of th- the difference between the on the ground reality of what Musk promises and what his companies are able to deliver and what the public perception of these things is to give him credit where credit is due the man does know how to play media narratives i mean this guy has you know overseen you know companies that have basically just been glorified government contractors for you know over uh, a decade and a half now um you know into companies that are now massively profitable so profitable that the united states government is giving them money to develop our kind of spacefaring uh capabilities it's egregious um but it just sort of shows the kind of touch and go operation that is you know happening behind the scenes one of the major engineers um on this project project uh you know resigned recently because they were worried about the kind of internal um you know antics within the company were going to prevent them from being able to deliver on these kind of projects and now you're seeing the other side of that is that it looks like they might be um you know that musk is you know getting worked up um you know over thanksgiving weekend and calling people to come back into the office um because they're not really able to maintain and to deliver on the things that they promise you know and, and we're gonna talk about tesla car company in a minute but again this is a company um that's valuation is all based for the vet for the most part i mean if you actually look at the nuts and bolts of the car company what it is actually able to produce versus the major car companies around the globe um tesla is a very very small player why is it you know the the highest value car company um in the globe it's because people investors and now the public investors have bought into this kind of narrative that this is the future and this is going to pay off in the future right this is 
narrative, right? This is like telling a story. Um, and this is why it's really important that we start to poke holes and expose this narrative, not just out of personal animus because we don't like this guy, but because there are consequences to a- giving somebody like this control a vast amount of not just like, you know, resources in the sense of money, but, you know, incredibly smart people who do work for these companies that want to do good work are sort of being forced and, and, and shoved in to work for a complete egomaniac like Musk. Um, it's it's extremely wasteful of, of human potential and talent. Yeah, I keep coming back to the word impresario uh, to describe Musk, which is uh, yeah. defined as a person who organizes and often finances concerts, plays, or operas. Like these are big specu- spectacles that he is financing. And it doesn't, I, apparently, it hasn't seemed to matter yet that the return on these spectacles isn't, isn't going to be what he actually promises, right? He just had to recall an autopilot update uh, because you get something called phantom braking, which I don't know if you've ever been on a highway, not something you want to just just happen on a like in a car is your brakes to go right and, and, and like i mean i and we haven't got to the cars yet but i just want to say while well, it's on my mind i keep seeing these like i i see a lot of like crash videos and we'll see some of like tesla's autopilot mm-hmm. going going wrong the stuff where it's going right is stuff that a 16 year old driver would do right right it's like mm-hmm. oh look at the look at this avoid this obstacle and it's like yeah i i fucking did that like when i was like going through puberty and like right like i the baseline will be when you consistently first of all you don't see all these things where it's just cream and cones because it can't mm-hmm. figure out that it's it's this is in a construction zone um it will be when you see videos of the cars uh, avoiding obstacles in a way a human couldn't. That's yeah. when you want to get into a, a self-driving car. And that's not, uh, that's a decades off, basically. And we'll get more into the car stuff in, in just a moment, but it, it should be noted that other companies that have been sort of trying to, you know, like Google for years is working on trying to create an uh, autopilot system. They decided against it, um, you know, pursuing it with the, the kind of fervor that they had been uh, because they didn't think that the technology was there. They didn't think that it was safe and that they didn't, as a company, want to be associated uh, with, you know, something that made people feel unsafe and was, uh, you know, a failure, uh, you know, not the Saying this to put a little halo on Google's head, um, but it should be noted, um, you know, that Musk's kind of ability and like innovation is actually just a wanton, um, you know, kind of attitude. Uh, you know, he has a he has a very like glib attitude toward human safety and human life. Um, and yeah, we'll get to the car stuff is really fascinating. The more that you actually start looking under the hood. Um, but before we get there, I just wanted to also note the, the role that he's playing um, politically. This is him complaining about um, about you know Joe Biden's uh, Build Back Better, right? And look, we criticize that plan a hell of a lot on the show. It is nowhere near um, close to what we need, um, you know, to be doing. Not only just to kind of like kickstart the American economy to put more money in working people's pockets, um, but to start to deal with the very real threat of of climate change, something that Elon Musk, you know, puts, you know, presents himself as somebody who's trying to come up with the solutions for it. We'll get to why that shit is not the case in in just a moment. Um, but this is his kind of response. Um, talking again, to go back to like Musk, people try to act like Musk is some kind of new version of capitalism, some nice, sweet version of capitalism. Same kind of shit as ever. This is him talking to the Wall Street Journal against a, bit, a major government uh, program. Um, then, you know, at some point, really what you're doing is capital allocation. So you're not, it's not money for personal expenditures. It's it, what you're doing is, is capital allocation. And it, it does not make sense to take uh, the, the job of capital allocation away from people who have demonstrated great skill in capital allocation and give it to uh, you know, an entity that has demonstrated very poor skill in, in capital allocation, which is the government. Uh, I mean, you can think of the government essentially uh, as a corporation in the limit. Uh, it, it is, it is a, the government is simply the biggest corporation with a monopoly on violence and, with, and where you have no recourse. Can so how much money do you want to give part? that entity? So that's what this guy thinks about the government. And like, certainly, um, you know, the, the U.S. government is uh, controlled for the most part by the super wealthy and the elite in this country. Um, but it is still something on some levels that has the potential of being answerable to the public. Um, unlike 
companies like uh, Tesla, unlike people like Elon Musk. Um, so it's, it's really rich for him to go on about that. But I really wanted to focus on his first bit about capital um, allocation. Um, Talking about himself as somebody who's very good at allocating capital. You look time and time again um, at, at what Musk has done with the money that he's come into. It has been buying himself access um, to already existing companies, right? You look at the solar company, buys it. Uh, a part of him buying it um, is, is requiring it to list him as a founder. You look at SpaceX, same thing, buys it. Now Musk gets to present himself as a founder of a company that he didn't found. Tesla, another example of that. Musk is somebody who his great wisdom of capital um, allocation is finding ways to buy himself access to boardrooms across the country so that he can take credit for other people's work, right? Um, and beyond that, what has happened with those companies under his stewardship, right? You look at you know a company like SpaceX, we're looking at an example right now where he's worried that that company is about to go bankrupt, not just with his money, but with money from that was allocated to him um, by the government. So if uh, unless he's trying to do some kind of incredible experiment where he is just continuing, and like by the way, uh, that doesn't even get into all of the subsidies that Musk and his companies have received over the past ten years. Um, you know, twenty fifteen there was a report in the L.A. Times that he's got somewhere close to half a billion dollars alone um, in just you know government government subsidies. So this is somebody who has profited immensely off of the kind of generosity and I don't know. Uh, faith of, of the U.S. government, something that needs to end right now. Um, but it's just it's rich for someone like that, somebody who's personally profited so much from government allocation of, of resources to now sit around and act like he's somebody uh, you know who has a deeper understanding of these things. When you look at the actual success rate of these organizations that he's been in charge of, they have not been impressive on any kind of nuts and bolts, open up the books, let's see how profitable these companies are level. This is somebody who's wasted a lot of people's money um, and time and now are resources um, you know, and does not have too much to show for it. Yeah, I love the bit. And uh, uh, chat, let me know if my uh, mic is still messing up. Do I sound okay, David? You sound beautiful uh, to me, Matt. Um, so this thing where he says capital allocation, it doesn't make sense to take it from. And he just does, he can't say capitalists because people would be like, fuck you. You asshole. Yeah. Um, right? Like, so he says the people who have been demonstrated competent at allocating capital. Like, and as you said, like, First of all, motherfucker, the government has a, a much better track record, in my opinion. I'll, I'll put it up against private capitalists any day. I mean, the fucking internet, like, I mean, just just to go through, like, the litany of, like, the, the, the tradition here, like, obviously, like, um, uh, I mean, space travel tech itself, like, rocketry. The I mean, cell phones, come on. I mean, this, like, we, GPS. we're so well-versed in these arguments. Right. You know, the government's ability to research and discover new technologies has been and uh, you know in part i mean you know and it's mainly because the united states has so many resources uh, that it has you know pillage from the rest of the world but the ability of the united states government to fund really really breakthrough technological resource um um technological breakthroughs is unmatched certainly by any kind of private corporation right yeah. maybe the chinese or the soviet union uh, are probably the only real competition that 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 we have there right yeah i mean it's 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 really ridiculous and i mean beyond that it shows that like musk for the most part is talking to people with very very little kind of like historical or political um education i mean even his kind of thing about like the 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 government having the monopoly on violence right that's really only impressive to people if if you haven't had much experience with kind of like very very early um you know sociology um you know you know entry level intro course sociology but I, I wanted to note, um, because we only played that little bit of the clip there, that the longer version of this clip is him really railing against subsidies. So he's railing against the Build Back Better plan um, because he doesn't think that electro um, electric vehicles should enjoy the kind of subsidies that have given him the foothold in the market, right? And like, there's a very, very simple version of that, right? Which I think most people can recognize um, that he doesn't want to see his competition sort of benefit from the systems that have benefited him in the past um, because he knows that as more and more competition starts to enter into the market, 
this very serious problems um, with Teslas um, are going to be exposed. But before we even get there, I just wanted to know one thing in particular that he was very worked up about um, was this desire of um, the Biden administration to invest massively in electric vehicle charging stations across the country, something that Musk called, you know, ridiculous. Um, well, why would Musk be against uh installation of more electric vehicle charging stations. Well, in the same way that Apple acts like Monopoly and many of these other technology uh, companies just sort of try to sit um, on on advancement and come up with ridiculous ways to milk uh, money from their customer base, Tesla is no different from that because they use a very, very special and unique um, charger uh, for their electric vehicle charging stations. Meaning um, that if the United States was to sort of implement a universal charging station system across the country, that one Teslas would either not be able to charge at those stations without an adapter, right? Or they might be forced to change um, the systems that they have already, um, you know, created again, so that they can make sure that if, you know, that if you own another kind of competition vehicle, you can't go to a Tesla charging station, right? It's all about kind of needless exclusivity. Um, And, you know, this is not something that serves any kind of actual technical value other than making something so that only Tesla users feel like, you know, that, that they're the only people who are able to use these kind of higher end stations yeah that's all they got is let's do the lightning connector thing and yeah. uh and exclusive dongles like a great and, innovation and big screen a screen that's much bigger than any other kind of screen that uh, automakers would put into their car um because they're not they're not safe let's get into some of this um because should we do the autopilot stuff first or should we talk uh, or should we note a couple things about the viability of, of, of Tesla cars, their longevity? Uh, well, let's, let's do the theory first and then we can show the practice. Okay. Oh, the longevity stuff. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the lo- I just longevity. want to note this. Like, please look, I know some people like Tesla's out there and like, look, it's not my bag, but like I can say that they look sort of cool. Um, and I'm sure they're very, very fun to drive. I'm sure they're much nicer than the car that I have, which is probably, I think what 23 years old at this point, but you know, the difference between my car and a Tesla, my car has lasted for 23 years on the road. A Tesla certainly will not. So all um, Teslas, the way that they are made, they are extremely um, cheap and they are disposable cars. There are so many stories of these big Tesla bros out there getting a, you know, a little fender bender, nothing too big, something that any kind of, you know, um, mechanic worth their salt, anyone who does any body work worth their salt should be able to fix. Um, they go in and they try to get their car fixed for a little ding or something like that. And they get told by Tesla that, no, we actually just need to replace the entire car. The entire car? Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's because the bodies of those cars are made out of aluminum. And aluminum is very cool for making the car look really sleek and also for making it lightweight. But it essentially makes it um, close to impossible, um, at least on an affordability scale, um, for the people to be able to do kind of minor repairs uh, to the car. Meaning that most of these cars are not designed with the idea of like, you know, we want this to last for decades. They are meant to be just like your iPhone so that you can drive for five, six, seven years. So all of this shit about environmental uh, environmentalism and waste, you are far better off, right? You know, continuing to drive a car that uses gasoline, then, you know, buying something like a, you know, a Tesla that takes incredible amounts of resources to produce, right? But that's even just assuming that maybe the Tesla could last like 20 years. You yeah. are certainly much better. Your environmental footprint is, is much better if you continue to drive, you know, a gas, an older gas vehicle um, than buying a car that is not even likely to be able to be on the road um, if it, if it was, you know, if it, uh, you know, has any kind of, you know, minor damage to it over the next few years, right? These are cars that just are not designed to be long lasting vehicles. And it makes sense because Tesla um, as a corporation is not a car company that has been very interested in making cars affordable for the vast, uh, the vast majority of Americans. It's a car company that is sort of 
aimed at a very specific type of, you know, wealthy, elite um, Americans as a way for them to sort of express themselves as people who care about the future, you know, people who care about technology and all this kind of stuff. And look, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and get super worked up at somebody for l- driving or enjoying a, a Tesla car, but I am going to talk about like the large scale effects of this company on our society and what that really does mean Um for us, as we're trying to chart out a future um, in this country, uh, you know, to make sure that we're able to sort of meet our immediate needs today, right? The transportation needs that we have today, with you know, balancing that with the very serious, um, impending, and ongoing catastrophe that is climate change, right? And this is just not somebody who's expressing to me. Um, this is not somebody who I have a lot of confidence in, sort of leading us out of this problem. And you look at their entire history, um, and you see fraud, fraud, fraud fraud, fraud, fraud. Um, you see things that are not very well thought out. Um, and then you see this kind of disposability mindset, even with something that is supposed to be environmental and green and, you know, ecologically friendly. Yeah. I mean, and it's, and that it does suck that he really is capitalizing on, on basically on empowered consumers desires to believe that they're doing something right. Like he, he mm-hmm. basically cornered that market and, uh, I mean, that, th- that's the first people I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm bluffing. I don't know anybody that has a Tesla, um, but I'm just, I guess when I see them driving down the street, I don't think of a person like, I don't think they're like an Elon, right? I think they're like, uh, uh, like a, a very high earning liberal, um, and, and think that this is all we need to do is, um, get electric cars and, uh, and everything's going to be. Well, safe. I mean, I know you, you've expressed, and I know this is, we should maybe do a whole thing. Like there is is something kind of um there is also a problem with like the whole electric car solution to to these these things in, in general because uh, the long uh, the long view that we have to have um is that the proliferation and maintenance of you know mass scale 300 million americans all having private vehicles is just not very sustainable even if they are not you know using gas at the at the pump you know electricity production doesn't just happen right we're not catching you know thunderbolts and you know powering our cars with them like there are um you know fuels that are are used um to produce lots of electricity obviously there's you know other versions that we want to you know be following but you know what i'm saying like you know electricity yeah. itself does not necessarily mean that it's clean but we can't get into that because we still have so much to get to with the danger of this shit. Um, But I I just had to let that be said that there are just fundamental flaws with the, with the design of, of, of the Teslas themselves. Um, But let's get to this because I think one thing that's really alarming to both Matt and I is um, the automated system in these Teslas. Um, Not only because, you know, there's this hubris around it, um, but we're finding out that these are extremely dangerous and that they've been sort of forced onto, you know, onto our public roads without a lot of consideration um, for their, their safety. And this is an issue of public safety first, but it's also an issue of democracy. I do not want to live in an open playground for a guy like Musk to, frankly, like... I just wanted to be very clear because I know some people like, you know, this is out on the internet and a lot of different people are going to be watching this. I don't feel too much of a, of a need to kind of like personally come at like Tesla owners or even people who are interested in Musk and all this kind of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that what he actually does is, is quite cynical and, and sinister because he does heavily imply um, that he sort of figured out solutions to these problems that his products work. Um, and, you know, we can drop all the environmental stuff. We can talk, drop what I was talking about, about the aluminum cars, this stuff um, with the autopilot in these Tesla cars. Um, I, I, I it, it is fraud. Um, he's, he's, he's defrauded, um, I think people, his investors and he's, and he's defrauded, uh, you know, the public and certainly his customers, because the fact is as, as much winking as he does is saying like, well, you actually still need to pay attention to the road when you're driving my cars. He tries to make it seem, he, he heavily implies that they've sort of figured this out, um, and that this stuff is ready to go. So again, um, I, I don't want to f- focus too much on individual consumers of, of like Tesla products, right? Um, but I, I, no, I, I want to note that this is an issue of, of, of democracy and public safety, right? And that we should not be exposed um, to unsafe vehicles on the road because some guy basically refuses to listen um, 
uh, to, to the federal government when it comes to putting in kind of basic safety measures in his car. And there needs to certainly be a reckoning with him on this. Yeah. I mean, this is a, uh, uh, this is a, uh, commons issue, right? Um, this is him using the public roads, uh, and us, uh, pedestrians as, um, test subjects, right? This is, and nobody signed any waivers in academia. They have really strict, um, uh, 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 requirements on if you're going to participate in a, an experiment and Tesla is doing all these experiments every day, um, on you collecting you crossing the road saying, Hey, don't hit that. And hopefully it's right. But who knows? Like, I mean, I know I feel weird when I cross the street right in front of a Tesla. Um, I, I, <laughs> and there are too many of them around here, man, because um, all these freaks are moving here from all over. Not I was going to say California, but all over the country who are just like Musk super fans. Like they want to sit here and get like a front row a seat to whatever freaky ass shit he's going to put out there. And it makes me very worried um, in, a, in a state like Texas, which has just sort of so much gutted uh, consumer protections. I mean, you know, Texas used to be a, a state where we had these kind of super radical um consumer protection lawyers who came after everybody um and and years and years and years of that have um have of, of gop like government have, have sort of come at that i don't want to do a whole history of like texas litigation but it is it is very scary right to see um you know the reasons he came to a state like this is because he thinks that he can get away with a lot more than he could have in california um I want to look at this one right here because uh, this was a New York Times story that is, is is quite serious. Inside Tesla's, Elon Musk pushed an unflinching vision for self-driving uh, cars. The automaker may have undermined safety in designing its autopilot driver assistance system to fit its chief executive's vision, former employees say. And throughout the story, um, you basically are painted a picture of somebody who refused to listen to the engineers um and and the people who sort of understand how to make a car and how to make a car safe um and buck the trend of what other car companies were doing and he likes to present himself as like well i'm a maverick the reason that other car companies weren't willing to to do this is because they didn't want to put out cars that were unsafe um let me get here right here we got um you know, he there's a long talk about like how we've sort of f tried to force them to fit to put in very specific aesthetic choices in the cars that probably weren't the best safety or efficiency um, solutions. But this one is is quite frightening. Hardware choices have also raised safety uh, questions within Tesla. Some argue for pairing cameras with radar and other sensors that work better in heavy rain and snow, bright sunshine and other difficult conditions for several years. Autopilot incorporated radar. And for a time, Tesla worked on developing its own radar technology. But three people who worked on the project said Mr. Musk um, had repeatedly told members of the autopilot team that hum if humans could drive with only two eyes, that meant that, uh, and that this meant cars should be able to drive with cameras alone. They say, he saw this as returning to first principles, a term Mr. Musk and others in the technology technology industry have long used to refer to sweeping aside um, standard practices and rethinking problems from scratch. Um, yeah. Oh, this is a great line here, too. In May of this year, Mr. Musk said on Twitter that Tesla was no longer putting radar in new cars. He said the company had tested the safety implications of not <laughs> using radar, but provided no details. Right. I mean, this is rich stuff. Uh, let me see. I mean, there's so much. Uh, there's like there's other aspects in here, too. Um, but can I just uh, just to yeah. comment on the radar thing? Like. You want to be better than humans, you fucking dickhead. Like that, right? Who cares that we only use two eyes? Let's be better than, let's use eight. Like use however many it needs to get me and my family home fucking safe. And so you don't kill any pedestrians. <laughs> In 2014, Tesla began putting radar on its Model S sedans. As it, this is just fat, like I'm just saying, like this is just one example that you can imagine is going on all across the board, from the cars to SpaceX to um, the solar panels to the batteries. Right, the kind of um, hoops that people have to sort of jump through to appease this guy are absurd. And this is again why we should not be allocating this person public money. I um, mean, they should be investigated for what they've been doing over the past few years. Anyways, um, 
So Tesla puts in radar in their 2014 model, but Mr. Musk did not like the way the radar looked inside an open hole in the front of the cars and told his engineers to install a rubber seal, according to two people who worked on the project at the time. Even though some employees were warned that the seal could trap snow and ice and prevent the system from working properly. These people said the company went ahead with Mr. Musk's instructions um, without testing the design in winter weather, but resolved the situation after customers complained that the radar stopped working in winter weather. Well, I'm really happy that they um, that the people told you up front that this wasn't going to work, but you put that out on the road for a while, um, you know, <laughs> and put people um, at, at risk and just created needless headaches um, to kind of appease your really bizarre aesthetic sensibilities. Yeah, well, as a North Dakotan, I can tell you that it's actually fine because winter is a notoriously safe time to be uh to piloting an automobile because if you get in a crash there's all that fluffy snow to crash into and you don't really get hurt that's true it's beautiful and you know and, and as you go through that that story they sort of break down what we are hitting at and what we're learning um on a public scale now i mean i believe it's 18 people who have passed away at, at this point um, who have died as a result of these cars driving on autopilot and killing people right needless deaths um to satisfy the ego of of this person right deaths that not only were preventable um it took incredible incredible willingness um to deny the to ignore the kind of early warning signs that this system was not ready um, to go out to the public look i'm not an engineer uh, which is why i listen to folks who know better than me um but from what I've I've heard, the problems with this autopilot system are one that it just is not able to sort of work through the myriad of different um, kind of situations that you face on the road, especially on roads of all different sizes and climates and weather. Right? I mean, this is they, they promote this vehicle as this autopilot system as something that can work anywhere in the United States. Surely can't. Um, and. Beyond that, um, other people, the other competition who really do want to see this kind of system work, who really do want to see the potential for cars to be able to operate on our roads, um, do not pursue this technology in the way that, that Tesla does. As I mentioned earlier in this segment, you know, Google, one of their major competition, um, you know, in this space, decided that they would rather, you know, work on this slowly rather than put out a system that could potentially create, you know, kill people, maim people, cause massive amounts of property damage, etc. Right? Like other people in the space have said, hey, the technology just is not there yet, including with radar, right? So it's like it's bad enough that Musk is sort of handicapping right. the, you know, the process by re re removing another kind of sensor, right? And the reason that you want to have a, another kind of sensor like radar in addition to a camera is because cameras, computer cameras get confused, right? They're there's a lot, I mean, hell, the naked eye gets confused. So you want to have as many sensors out there as possible to be basically to be able to push back against the system if it's going to do something egregious like we're about to watch um, in, in, in a moment. Um, but look, this is just something that like people within the space are saying the technology is not here yet. Um, people within the company are privately coming forward and saying the technology is not here yet. And we're actually being stifled by the top of this company. Um, and, uh, um, and it's, you know, it's having very serious human consequences, but that's the test of the game. Anytime that he gets criticized publicly by anybody, he immediately starts to come at their character, make wild insinuations. We talked about earlier about what he did to somebody who was just trying to save children who were trapped in a cave, who were in the dark for days, right? Worried about how they were going to get out. Musk was mad because some diver said that he didn't need his insane and ridiculous submarine. So he went out publicly and maligned this person saying that they were a pedophile file with no evidence or anything like that right this is what he does and he's done it time and time again um whenever it, so many journalists have come forward um and and musk you know sends his army of, of twitter folks at him and then you have an entire tech media that just continues to report this stuff unquestioningly right they're like musk said this 
So it must be true. And what we see when these things actually come out onto the road, when these things actually are, 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 are trying, they're unsuccessful. Yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's Elizabeth Holmes with just a little bit, a little bit more empowered um, to like command engineers. Yeah. Well, let's look at this because um, this is one of Matt's favorite pastimes. Um. There's a website <laughs> real quick um, called uh, tesladeaths.com. Um, and mm. you can look at and they and they mark um, who, who died and if autopilot um, is claimed. And uh, the recent one in New York uh, looks like a guy was changing his tire and got smoked by a Tesla in autopilot. So it's like you're you're pulled over, you're changing a flat. Do you trust a person just driving a car more? Do you trust somebody on Tesla looking at their iPad uh, or the giant iPad they put on the, um, the screen? Which, which you can play video games on while you're driving the car. Just absurd. Yeah. But watch this and tell me if you feel safe with these with these vehicles on the road. <laughs> Hilarious captain. Elon Musk, yeah, he probably doesn't. Look at that. Not knowing it's a hill. Well, I mean, that's just not knowing it's a hill, right? Things that a human can know. It's, no, that it's just... <laughs> Yeah, that's outrageous. It's like, yeah. It's so... I mean, some of these are kind of humorous, but... <laughs> no, but we've we've played plenty of videos on this, on the show of these vehicles, um, you know, really, really failing um, on the road. And, like, all the times these videos are uploaded by believers... You know, right? Yeah. You know, by people who want this system to work, right? These are people who are Tesla owners. They're very excited by these new updates to the autopilot system, and they want it to happen. And it's scary. And we played one. I wish we had it in front of us right now, but we played one a few weeks ago. Where like this guy um, who is an early adopter for the system was driving around New York. Um, and you know had to jump in at the last second to stop his car from running over you know about 15 different pedestrians people because it's new york city it's crowded right um and and the car just made an errant right turn and he had to stop it from from you know causing a very serious injury to folks and thank god he was behind the wheel but you know the, the problem with the autopilot technology um is one that you know it fails and two it just is not in our nature to sit around and have something automated and to expect that all drivers are going to be able to take control of a situation when the uh, the system fails. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, if, if you're distracted, if you've been on the road for 15 minutes and it's working well, and then all of a sudden the car does something, uh, you know, uh, absurd to have like the kind of awareness of what's going on around you, how fast your car is moving, where your feet should be. You know what I mean? Like everyone, you know, most people who watch this drive, y'all know what I mean. It's just, it's a kind of absurd expectation in the first place. But beyond all this, this is just not something that is safe to be on our road, ro on our roadways right now. And I'm happy to see that there's some level of investigation, but this stuff should never have been able to be able to come to market um, until it had been proved extensively. Um, and that's the thing that's so frightening is that you get the kind of media spectacle around the, the future of automaking and what Musk is doing, what Tesla is doing. Um, and it's completely incongruent with like the actual reality of it. And the problem with that um, is not, you know, is is not just that some people are being under delivered and might be sad because their cars aren't working the way that they want to. That actually creates a very serious uh, public safety risk for the rest of us. Yeah, and just one more note on the video technology that's used for this autopilot stuff. That when you do a captcha, um, and it, it you know to log in somewhere and it shows you like a street sign or something like that, and you have to identify you know, what it is. The reason it's having you do that is because a computer can't and it's trying to teach the computer using human beings like what is a street sign, what's this or that, right? And the, because a thing that computer just image, imagery is really bad at doing is determine. it can tell a human, but a partially obscured human, a partially obscured anything gets all of a sudden very tricky for a computer. Like it, what's, ha what's a quarter of an apple, right? Like what's this little thing? It... it, it and that's like the problem it's running up against. So that you're reacting, think of how like captures work. 
it, that's the state of like um, the, the sort of visual identification technology, and it's not very good. And you wouldn't want to rely on it for your safety as a pedestrian. Absolutely. I mean, we've watched videos where that system is getting confused by the moon. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, maybe that's the most human thing about this whole system so far. I mean, the moon, the moon has always been, a, you know, a, something of fascination to us. We've come up with some wild stories and mythologies around it. Um, but I don't want that shit behind the wheel of thinking that the moon is a stoplight and that it's just stop in the middle of a highway where people are going 80 miles an hour. No, thank you, son. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> well... <laughs> I wish I could say this was the last one, but this asshole not only um, <laughs> is, is getting a lot of government money, local governments around the country are sort of being bought are, are buying into all of his scams. Um, it, you know, it's certainly a Musk problem. Don't, don't get me wrong, um, but it does show the kind of decline of, of American local governments uh, that this guy has been able to get so much leeway um, with cities and localities across the country this is somebody who i mean like just look, look what he did here in in taxes is you know he got a tax break from the local school system upwards of 64 million dollars money was essentially taken from the the pockets of of our local education system for you know young people um who should be getting much much more than they are right now um and it, you know and and what is the benefit of that for our, our community and our society uh, i mean it, it certainly is not trickling down to the rest of us. It's creating an extremely, um, you know, high wage earner in the communities, which is driving up, uh, you know, housing prices and services for the for the people who are actually from here, who have roots here, um, all while basically uh, refusing to pay taxes, continuing to get government, uh, you know, to benefit from government subsidies and government programs. Um, with the media that's sort of willing to play ball. And it just it has to stop because, again, like at first when Musk was doing the goofy stuff and he had the Tesla company, we thought it was funny. And obviously we don't like rich people in general. Um, but this is somebody who is now getting more and more um, influence and leeway from, from governments. And I think that that shit needs to stop right now.